All right, what's going on YouTube? Bringing you an update video. Got my power supply powered, my camera over here. Uh, as you can see, it's working, it's on. Um, got my Samsung Tab S7. And I got my iPad mini, six gen. And over here for my dog. Sorry, I apologize, I'm taking care of my kids today. Um, they're home for the day with me, so got to bear with me. I got my dock, um, and I got my USB video capture card and a remote control. This, this, and this I'll talk about later. You don't really need to pay attention for that. I'm just trying to get, well, demonstrate how the camera works and how I couldn't get it to work on iOS because iOS, frankly, sucks. It's not that it sucks, it's just they try to emphasize how much uh, uh, control they have over the security. Ugh, over the security, sorry, English is hard right now and when my kids distracting me, you know. <laughs> um, bear with me, I know you're gonna hear a lot of background, I'm sorry guys. Um, so let me just get started. So, um, this is a pass-through device, so I could be charging it. Let me get that plug. For the purpose of this video, I'm not gonna be charging it, so. This is a pass-through port which provides power to the whole device and then it also allows you so for instance here I'm not currently charging oof let me zoom in and there you go I'm not currently currently charging right so I'll plug it in two things are gonna happen camera's gonna come up you get your charging your USB connection and then uh, your power charge so take these doing pass-through charging um, I mean here you see the reverse camera which is over here let me wave at it um, and it's pulling it up. Unfortunately for Apple restrictions, I already talked to two of the more popular um, USB camera apps on iOS and they said that due to limitations of the system of uh, implemented by Apple, you're not allowed to automatically open or automatically close apps, you know, upon an action detection or or lack of detection, you know, which you would need to disconnect or connect you know so the only alternative is it, it still works you can still access the reverse camera it's just gonna be manual so say you're playing music you know for example uh, let's go to Amazon music I'm not gonna play anything just for copyright purposes but let's say you're playing something then you know you're gonna have to go to your apps and then tap in your reverse camera to look at the reverse so you could have access to your reverse camera it's just not how it works on Android. So for comparison's sake and trying to keep this video short, I'm just gonna jump over. So as of right now, that's what I'm gonna tell you. USB cameras do work. You could plug in your reverse camera. It's just not gonna launch automatically how you could set it up on Android. So now let me go show you Android. Let's get out of here. Uh, let me lock this, keep from distracting and let's go over here. Uh, actually, I'm not gonna plug it in yet. I'm gonna unlock it and show you because also another thing that I noticed I couldn't get audio and video to be playing at the same time on this one which you're able to get on the Android so for that example I'm gonna put some non copyright music we'll just go ahead and play this um, so I don't get copyright All right so you have that playing on full screen and we're gonna go ahead and plug in the USB. Let me set the camera so you guys can see it. Uh, all right, so we're plugging the USB now. There it goes. Charging. I didn't do anything. It just came up. All right, so let me bring it another angle. So that's the camera auto locking. And this blurriness that you saw on the iPad and this, I forgot to mention is, I don't know, I guess some signal from the power cable. If I end up disconnecting it, the camera cuts out, loses power for a bit, but then it comes back on through the USB-C power. And then boom, automatically comes back up. And audio doesn't cut out, it continues to play. Um, and if you disconnect it, obviously it's a video, so it kind of downsize and minimize the window. But say you're doing something else, like for example, calendar, you're checking your schedule and shit. Um, and then you plug in the camera like I just did. And there you go. Disconnect the camera. For example, switching on a reverse, boom, back to where you were. 
And yeah, so let's let's try to rush through this. So that's that's how it works on Android, pretty pretty flawlessly. I like it. So what I'm trying to say, like you guys are saying, well, you just unplug it and then replug in the USB. So that's that's the USB losing power, right? And then you can connect it and make it gain power, right? So technically, that's the same thing that what a reverse trigger does. It cuts out 12 volt power and then it brings 12 volt power back on. So me simulating this being cut, right? Let me wide angle. So this is me unplugging it. Boom, back to what you were doing. Me plugging it in. That's you putting it in reverse. Boom, reverse camera comes up, right? So now if I unplug it, we're back to where we were. So that seamless interaction between this USB dock and the tablet is what I would want to have for this uh, Apple iPad Mini, but for security reasons, I don't let you access that system level control on the uh, iPad as they do on Android. So for that reason, this, I'm gonna have to scrap this plan, sell this back, cause I don't really need it. Just wanted to get it going, but um, if anybody wants it, 280, um, shipping, we do calculate it. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, so that's how that would work on here. And if you're asking, well, are you going to be unplugging it and plugging it back in? No. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a USB jumper from plugged in here and, and a female plugged into this. I'm going to cut that wire, uh, take out or separate from the, the pack, uh, the power wire, cut it. Get rid of the one coming from this side and then run my reverse trigger into the positive to give this power when the reverse light is triggered. And that will simulate technically the same thing as plugging it in and plugging it and unplugging it. So it'll get power when the reverse light is on and it'll lose power when it's off. So it'll technically do the same thing as, you know, it is doing right now with me plugging it in and plugging it off. But yeah, so um, I don't want to make this video too long. So that's in theory what I'm gonna be doing, and that's how that would work. Oh, uh, if you on, if you need um, any further, if you need any further, <laughs> if you need any further uh, explanation of that, maybe you should talk to somebody that knows a little bit about 12 volt wiring because it's it's very simple. Um, you might need to have a 5 volt step down. I haven't gotten that far, but I mean that's a worst case scenario to get this to work. But it's very uh, you could accomplish it easily. Oh, is what on. I'm trying to get to. So. Um, that's not the hard part. This is the hard. The hardest part is figuring all this out, and this is the simplest part. Now, for purposes of sharing the app that I'm using, let me unplug this. Um, the app that I'm using is NextCam, which is oh, okay. <laughs> all right, so you gotta wait. You can't use it right now. I know you're laughing, but it's not funny. <laughs> so that's the app that I'm using. That's the logo. Let me get the name of it. Um, there it is. Next cap, and that one has features to set up uh, automatic launch and automatic close when camera is detected or not detected. So that's the app that I'm using, and that's the app that I recommend for you guys to use. And if you can donate to the uh, creator, he's a really good guy. I actually chatted with him, and it got some of the issues we solved. So when I first started it up, I got a lot of notifications. You gotta allow everything, give access to everything. If not. Every time you plug in that camera, is gonna give you a little pop-up window. You're gonna have to click OK before it opens. So uh, we got past that, and, and everything's working good now. But that's the camera I recommend. And beyond that, this is if you're not gonna use a radio behind the tablet and you're gonna go straight tablet. Um, what I recommend is getting a radio. That's the simplest installation. Um, you don't have to deal with anything. You could just plug this in through Bluetooth. You don't have to run any hard wiring. Uh, what I actually recommend is a very expensive option actually so that would be second option what I just said running the radio um, and then um, my first option would be the Sony what is that Sony radio so let me pause and then I'll, I'll come back really quick my first option would be this uh, the Sony audio RSX GS9 um, very expensive radio as you can see but this one has supports um, HD audio output which would be my first choice if you have a DSP that supports that. I already have all that. That would be a great option for me. It's just I don't feel like shoveling out a thousand one hundred for a radio. So I'm not even going with this route. But this would be your best, you know, high quality sound if you're trying to get it directly from the from the radio. I mean from the Android tablet going into this radio and touch link out to a DSP. 
Uh, the secondary option is what I said earlier, which uh, the reason why I'm recommending that is you want Bluetooth connection. Why? Because you can pair this to Bluetooth, and if the, these radios usually have two Bluetooth connections, one for audio and one for phone connectivity. So you connect this to phone and audio, and then the other secondary just have your phone connected. And that would allow you to answer calls through your radio. Uh, secondary would also allow you to maintain your steering wheel controls, which is another great benefit of having a radio interface because with, without that, that's what this knob is for. It's going to be my volume control and changing and skipping songs. Um, you're going to lose steering wheel uh, connections the way, the way that I'm going about it. So that's why I recommend you guys running at least a radio with two Bluetooth connections behind this. That way you don't have to worry about wiring. Just wire the radio to work with your sound system and Bluetooth connect to a tablet and your phone. That way you could answer phone calls and use your tablet's audio through Bluetooth. But that, what happens, the downside to that is you get no high resolution audio uh, option through that. So for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a steering wheel control replacement. And I'm going to use this to pull HDMI output from this dock and convert it to a uh, toss link single out or optical out and plug that into my DSP and control everything. So my tablet is going to be my head unit is going to be everything. The things I'm giving up is receiving Bluetooth phone calls and steering wheel controls. Um, those are the hardships that I haven't figured out yet. If I, if I get a Samsung Galaxy phone, which I don't really like, but um, that would also be another option. If you have a Samsung uh, Galaxy phone, you could actually pair it to your Samsung tablets and answer phone calls through that. But that only works for Samsung devices. Beyond that, it doesn't. So for me that I have a Pixel and iPhone, I mean, neither of those could connect to it to receive calls. So uh, that's an, one of the things that you would be giving up. Uh, and yeah, so that kind of explains a little overview of how I would get audio out of this. So I would everything's coming through this dock. You're getting your reverse, you're getting your, your uh, control, and then you're getting your audio out. Um, let's get out of here. What else do I feel like I need to share? I think that's about it. That's just the generic rundown on how this would work. Uh, hopefully you guys found this useful, and if you haven't found anything that worked for you. Um, oh, the other thing that I need to mention, your device. You can't have cheap Android tablets and expect to have OTG. That's just, they don't go together, um, unfortunately. I'm a cheap guy, I'm gonna tell you that, you know, I like finding deals, but then um, not a lot of people are as handy as me. So these, this tablet that I got for like a hundred bucks, it had a broken screen. I found a screen on Alibaba or no, on AliExpress for like 70 bucks, waited for it to get here, replaced it and look, boom, brand new. Uh, so I think they got a tablet for under 200 bucks, it's a S7 and I had it for a little bit over a year now. So um, values are only going down because it's getting older, but it's still a very powerful tablet. So that's the route I would go. Get an older tablet that has a 4G connectivity. Right now I have it on Wi-Fi, but it also has 5G connectivity, so you can see right there. So I could be on the go and still have signal on the tablet and music or whatever. Um, and make sure it has USB 3.0 or 3.1 because I think that's what you need for video video to audio out so uh, I forget I did my research and that's why I, I got this model but you need USB 3.1 and then you also want um, OTG support if not you can't use the camera on it so those are things you got to keep in mind so you can't go with like those hundred dollar two hundred dollar tablets you know even though that's what this cost me but you know you have to get a tablet is usually in the thousands or eight nine hundred dollar range for it to have all these functionalities you know so uh, that's my recommendation um, if you're trying to do a dash mod uh, I'm gonna get started soon on doing the fiber uh, fiberglass resin because I did the other one and then I left it outside and it got all weathered and it just looks like shit now so I'm gonna make a new one uh, get it formatted to this extend it a little bit so I could do the the push in and you know slide out method I'll, and I'll kind of document all that for you guys but yeah, I just wanted to give you a rundown on how that works and how it doesn't work for Apple. And God damn you, Apple, let's get this shit working so more people could use more of your products and dashes and everything. I mean, it only benefits you. That's one of the things that I have with Apple, right? This is just a rant, you guys. If you're if you're done listening, that's it, you know? You guys don't have to listen to this. It's just going to be a little rant. Is I like Apple. I like the steadiness of the system. I like how reliable it is. I like how fluid and 
everything's fast. It's just shit like this, you know, where I connect this shit and it doesn't work or it restricts it. So it's holding itself back. Same thing with um, you have M1 MacBooks um, and you have M1 tablets now or M2, sorry, M2 chip tablets, which are capable of doing so much powerful shit. And actually, they coded it to be able to run Mac OS, but yet you still want to keep the the iPad uh, iPad OS. I'm trying to like think of all these OSs. So iMac OS is its own OS because that's their computers. That would be like Apple's version of Windows. And then you have your tablet version, which is uh, iPad OS, which is technically like their version of Android. So you have within that company like three or four separate systems which all run on the same chip, which then is like, why the fuck do you even have so much different chips if you can just merge all your OSs into one and make a super powerful device? Imagine being able to process the stuff that you do on the iMac and stuff on a tablet, you know? That would be great. That would be a device that I would, hands down, pay the money for it because it's going to be able to run all that on the go if it had 4G connectivity. But no, you know, we keep everything set. Well, now we... Uh, Apple keeps everything separate and charges you to buy this thing, buy that thing, and, you know, makes you part of the ecosystem for all you idiots that, I'm not going to call you this, it's just you guys could get cheaper options if you just diversify. But that's why, I mean, I have both devices myself, but uh, I'm not committed to either one or the other. It's just, seriously, son, right now I'm about to finish this thing. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm not committed to one or the other. It's just, you know, I would like for somebody just in the interest of actually creating something great, just do it and fuck my profits for a bit, you know? Like, let's just create. I, I would, I'm sure it will sell. If they created a iPad Ultra or whatever that could run Mac OS on the iPad and support all the apps, I would pay 2000 bucks for that, no problem. So I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that would. And you can still, you know, bring up your, your margins and everything. And, I mean, I think some of them are already 2000 bucks, But, you know, bring it up for another 500 bucks. Fuck it, you know. And people are going to buy it. That's all I'm saying. Instead of fucking paying $2,000 for a desktop, paying $2,000 for a tablet, and then paying $2,000 for a phone. Just make one thing that does everything great. All right, that's my rant. Android, you just can't get shit right. I'm, I don't want to discriminate. See, like, I'm discriminating. You need to fucking focus your shit stop fucking glitching out sometimes and thank you for being so open source where you could create shit and you know sideload it apple you're coming soon to sideloading but you gotta ease up on your restrictions on the system that's my rant um hopefully this leads to a better future for these two devices and i can't wait to see what else we come up with for our older cars